nowadays anyone can get hacked. But what happens when those who protect us are the victims? For example, cybersecurity firms. Well, when that happens, there are always lessons to be learned. Today's story takes us back to February 2013. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the Bit9 hack. We have with us Joe Stalker, the CEO of Patriot Consulting. Joe, what happened? About 10 years ago, there was a security company uh, named Bit9. They were known to provide, uh, at the time it was called uh, whitelisting is what we called it back then, but it's, you know, now the appropriate term is called allow listing. What was interesting about this hack is that they had an internet facing SQL server uh, that was breached with an attack known as a SQL injection uh, attack, which allowed the attacker to get on an internet facing server. And at that point, the attacker was able to somehow get a copy of Bitnine's code signing certificate And that allowed the attacker to basically create, I think it was like 33 files that they um, made appear as if Bit9 had authored those files. They then used those files to target, uh, my recollection of it 10 years ago is that they were Bit9 customers, that they knew they couldn't get into those clients because they were using Bit9 software and so they hacked Bit9 in order to get the code signing certificate to bypass those customer security defenses. So the mindset of the attacker was, hmm, they seem impenetrable. They're running this really amazing software. I'm just gonna go hack the security company that made that software. When I heard of this, it just absolutely blew me away. I was really impressed by the, the brazenness of the attacker to you know, not just look at a at a wall and say, okay, I can't overcome that wall, but to say, okay, we'll we'll just go after the security company. And you know, to hack a security company is, um, you know, it, it causes us all to kind of sit up because you assume that, you know, that that company is probably using their software. I think at the time, uh, Brian Krebs, who's an investigative reporter, he wrote an article that's still available online that stated that that organization acknowledged that they hadn't been running the latest up-to-date version of their own security software. And they attribute that to, you know, potentially why the, the issue happened. Lots of lessons learned there. I found it very interesting. Lots of, um, you know, things for us as security practitioners to, to be aware of that, you know, we need to be using the software and practices that we help others use on our own systems and uh you know definitely a very interesting attack we've seen others like it since then you know uh kaseya solar winds recently with cisco uh security organizations getting getting compromised Uh, but this is one of the earliest ones that i recall 